Now here's another question. Was Jesus buried in a tomb or thrown to wild dogs? Do archaeologists think they have evidence that shows where Jesus was crucified and where he was buried? To answer these questions, and to get a clear picture of what happened to Jesus at the end of his life, there are certain historical facts which must be examined. It seems to me that there are four fundamental historical facts which any credible historian must account for if he's to give a tenable historical hypothesis about the fate of Jesus of Nazareth. The first of these is the honorable burial of Jesus. The second of these is the discovery of his empty tomb. Third would be the post-mortem appearances of Jesus. And fourth would be the origin of the disciples' belief that Jesus was risen from the dead. Now, with respect to the first of those, the burial of Jesus, the majority of New Testament scholars who have written on this subject uh, agree that Jesus of Nazareth was buried by Joseph of Arimathea in a tomb. Scholars believe Jesus was honorably buried by Joseph of Arimathea because of the early historical evidence. Mark writes, Joseph of Arimathea went in before Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate granted the body to Joseph. And Joseph took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Jewish archaeologist Dr. Gabriel Barkai is considered to be the foremost authority on tombs in Jerusalem during the time of Jesus. I asked him if archaeological evidence supports the description given in the Gospels about the tomb in which Jesus was buried. Uh, the fact that uh, it was a rich man's tomb. We have most probably the allusion to the fact that it was outside the city of Jerusalem. Uh, we have uh, the stone found unrolled three days later. Uh, we have very little, but altogether we have about a thousand burial caves from the time of Jesus surrounding uh, Jerusalem. And uh, the uh, uh, details that we have in the Gospels about uh, uh, the burial of Jesus, they fit, fit well with uh, the evidence that we have in the field. I was somewhat amused when Peter Jennings on the ABC special said that according to the Gospels, Jesus was laid in the tomb by his mother and his friends. Now, if the story of Jesus' burial were a late developing legend that accrued over the decades in the early Christian church, that is exactly the sort of pious story that one would expect to find. Jesus was buried by his devoted mother and his faithful disciples. But that's not, in fact, what the Gospels say. Instead, what the Gospels say is that Jesus of Nazareth was laid in a tomb by this enigmatic figure, Joseph of Arimathea, who appears out of nowhere in the Gospels. And contrary to expectation, gives Jesus of Nazareth an honorable burial in a tomb. Moreover, Mark tells us that this man was a member of the Sanhedrin, the very council which had just condemned Jesus to be crucified, and that Joseph singles out Jesus among the trio of men that had been crucified for special care by giving him an honorable burial in a tomb rather than allowing the body to simply be dispatched into a common grave reserved for criminals. This is extraordinary and requires some sort of explanation. In fact, we discovered that archaeologists think the Church of the Holy Sepulcher may mark the actual site of the tomb in which Jesus was buried by Joseph of Arimathea. Obviously, this is the traditional site where Christians think that uh, Jesus was buried. You were asked to do the archaeological work, or part of the archaeological work on this site. Tell me, do you think this is the place where Jesus was actually? Well, there is very high probability, very high probability. Dr. Megan Broshi is a respected Jewish archaeologist and scholar on the Second Temple period. He was asked to conduct the excavation at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre for a rather unusual reason. They invited me to participate in the dig. What was very important for them that I was an infidel, I wasn't a Christian, they didn't want Catholic, they didn't want Greek Orthodox. They wanted somebody 
it was absolutely neutral, and that was the case. Now, the evidence Dr. Broshi found while excavating at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre led him to defend it as the most reasonable place for the burial of Jesus. I asked him why. For two reasons. One reason is that the tradition should be trusted. It was too important to be forgotten. And there was a Christian community in Jerusalem, around Jerusalem, that would have carried on, handed to one generation to the other. And the second reason is the area was a graveyard at the time of Jesus. It was a graveyard, and there are several graves around here. There were more, but they've been obliterated by later building the history. All four Gospels report Joseph of Arimathea requested permission from Pilate to bury Jesus, and that his body was laid in a tomb cut out of solid rock. Three of the writers say the tomb was new, that is, no one had ever been laid in the tomb before. All four accounts mention a stone that was rolled against the entrance to the tomb. And Matthew adds, it was a large stone. The Gospel accounts talk about a stone that was rolled in front of the tomb. Does that make sense to you? Why not? We found it. We found it? No, not here. But in many other places. The rolling stone. Yeah. How big were they? Oh, sometimes weighing more than a regular car. And they but being round, you know, you can roll it. In spite of the evidence for the honorable burial of Jesus, John Dominic Crossan said this in the ABC special. After Jesus died on a cross, he was thrown on a trash heap and chewed up by wild dogs. And one thing I would say to that is we are devoid of a single fact that says that happened to Jesus. We have a lot of reasons to think that he was buried and that the tomb in which he was buried was, uh, was empty. But nothing, not any fact, that says he was thrown into a common grave. If Jesus was in fact buried by a Jewish Sanhedrin in Jerusalem, as the Gospels claim, that means that the location of Jesus' tomb was known to both Jew and Christian alike. But in that case, it's impossible to imagine how a movement founded on belief in the resurrection of a dead man who had been publicly executed in Jerusalem could arise and flourish in the face of a tomb containing his corpse. So that those scholars who want to deny such things as the empty tomb, the resurrection appearances, also find themselves forced to deny the fact of the honorable burial of Jesus, despite the fact that this is one of the earliest and best attested facts about the historical Jesus that we have. It's extremely awkward for them. Some people say, well, the answer to that is that the disciples stole the body. That's why the tomb was empty. Nobody says that anymore. That theory has been completely abandoned since the early 1800s. No responsible scholar holds to such a thing. But why have scholars concluded the disciples did not steal Jesus' body? And why have they abandoned the theory that Jesus didn't die on the cross, that he just fainted or swooned? And further, why have they given up on the idea that Jesus later revived in the tomb, somehow pushed aside the huge stone, and then appeared to his disciples, convincing them that he had risen from the dead? Well, scholars dismiss these theories because they were completely demolished by the liberal critic David Strauss over a hundred years ago. But in his uh, major work in 1835 in the life of Jesus, he said the swoon theory is not going to work, and the problem is this, it is self-contradictory. What you have from the swoon is a living Jesus, but not a resurrected Jesus. And here's how it works. Jesus should have died on the cross. He didn't. He should have died in the tomb. He didn't. He certainly can't roll the stone away. No problem. He did. Now, Strauss didn't believe in a guard. But for those who believe a guard sitting out there, he works his way through the guards. Uh, but here's the problem for Strauss. Again, you've got didn't die on the cross, didn't die in the tomb, couldn't roll the stone. He comes to where the disciples are. He knocks on the door. What's this man going to look like? He's a human Jesus. He's been crucified. He's worked the wounds open again. He's bleeding from the scalp. His hair has not even been washed. I mean, you got sweat and blood, and he's worked the side open again. He's hunched over, and he's limping, and he's pale. And I told you I would rise again from the dead. The problem, Strauss said, with the swoon theory, is you get a Jesus who's alive, but you don't get a Jesus who's 